After months of planning, scheming, and preparing, the Clown Prince of Crime is ready for one last joke at the expense of the Dark Knight. All this and more on the pages of Batman issue number 95. The beginning of a brand new Batman event called Joker War. I'm Cape Joel. Let's hop on into part one and see what happens next, shall we? Well, alrighty then. This issue actually begins with a flashback to a story that longtime Batman fans will know very well. The first time Batman ever encountered the Joker. There was the dead diamond magnet, the ransom on television, as well as a trail of corpses. Leading Batman to one final showdown at the Reservoir, Alfred worries about Master Bruce. It seems that this case has gotten to him more than just about any other, and that's because, well, the Joker isn't like your average criminal. He doesn't seem to care if he gets caught or not. In fact, all of this brutality seems to only be testing Batman to see how far he's willing to go. Batman even says the Joker isn't like regular Madman that he encountered on his training. The Joker already viewed everyone as walking meat dead already. But that Batman was something truly different. He lived like he was alive, which explains why the Joker keeps coming back to Batman time and time again. Now back in the present, Punchline is directing her roving gangs of clowns to try and hunt down Batman wherever he might be hiding in the city. Luckily, Bruce thought ahead and has sent a bunch of drone Batmobiles to distract them. Batman's probably gonna wish he kept a few vehicles, though, as Punchline has invaded his inner sanctum with the help of a drugged Lucius Fox. The research and development wing of Wayne Enterprises, where Lucius has been building all those fantastic new Bat-themed toys that Batman has been using all throughout the first arc of this series. Now, Joker hopes to weaponize them and turn them against the Dark Knight. Speaking of Mr. J, what's he doing now that he's worth a billion dollars? Well, he's spending like it's going out of style. He's buying movie theaters, every movie theater he can get his hands on, including the famous Monarch Theater where the Waynes were shot in Crime Alley all those years ago. The old blind guy who runs the place says he's surprised that anyone with that much money would want to buy an old movie house. After all, young people don't seem to care about the classic movies anymore. Why would they want to see something they've already seen a hundred times before? To which the Joker responds in a very meta little speech that that's not true at all. People love hearing and seeing the same stories over and over again. They love knowing what the heroes and villains are going to say before they say it. The real artistry comes in peeling back the layers of these stories and finding extra hidden depth that no one ever saw before. So, literally, if you're one of those people out there asking why another big Joker story, the Joker is now talking directly to you, it would seem. Also, really, buying movie theaters, truly the Joker is a madman. Doesn't he know none of those are going to survive the next couple months? Now, you might be wondering to yourself, how the hell is the Joker able to get away with all of this? Surely not everyone in Gotham is blind. Well, they're not. Interim Police Chief Harvey Bullock and the GCPD have set up outside Wayne Enterprises. They know the Joker is behind this and that he's an evil psycho that needs to be stopped. The only problem is the Joker has spent his money very wisely on good lawyers like Mr. Graves, a.k.a aka the underbroker, who's using his newfound considerable fortune to gag the media as well as keep the mayor tied up in red tape as well until the Joker's plan is ultimately finished. Wow, it's true what they say, having a lot of money really is the greatest superpower, isn't it? This means Batman must literally break into his own building if he ever hopes to save Lucius and the city. Unfortunately, Punchline is already there to beat him to, well, the punch. They have themselves a big old fight inside one of the secret micro-bat caves that Bruce had built inside Wayne Enterprises. This one was a particularly special one, though. This is the one they were supposed to open once their good work was done. In fact, in order to celebrate the new Gotham, Lucius had built for Batman a brand new bat suit, one built on designs by Alfred. A kinder, gentler bat suit meant for a kinder, gentler age that may now never come. Batman ends up getting drugged by Punchline. Remember, she is a chemistry expert. And the chemical compound that's now coursing through our hero's vein is a sick combination of Joker toxin, scarecrow gas, and ooh, a little venom for spice. In reality, this isn't even the first time Batman has been doused with all of those things at once, but I like the idea that Punchline thinks she's being original because she's so new to this. As the comic winds down, Batman starts to lose his grip on reality, and perhaps most horrifying of all, he begins to hear the voice of Alfred in his head. The last thing we as the reader see is one of those brand new repurposed bat gliders opening up on the building Batman is sitting in, showing off its twisted new Joker grin. And so that was Batman number 85, Joker 
Joker War Part 1, and I gotta say, things have actually gotten off to a pretty good start. I think James Tynan is well aware enough as a writer that every Batman writer feels the need to tell their big Joker story, and that there's been a lot of them in the last little bit at DC Comics, but that he really wants to try and make his feel different, mainly by actually going back to a different era in Batman history. On paper, this may seem like a very modern Batman story, but when we really stop and think about it, all the hallmarks here are pretty classic DC comic books. What if the Joker got a bunch of new money? It is very much like, hey, what if he joined the UN? There's just something about it that feels so familiar and yet also fresh at the same time, much like the speech the Joker actually gives here in the book itself. And it's just beginning, too. Overall, I'd give this one an 8.5 out of 10, and I'm interested to see where the rest of the story is going to go from here. Hey there everyone, Cape Jewel again, and I want to thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. As always, if you liked what you see, be sure to like, subscribe, comment. It really helps drive engagement and helps me out too. Also, if you are a patron, which you can become for as little as a dollar a month, you will get exclusive content that no one else can ever see, and you'll get to see the Comic Multiverse podcast before anyone else too. You can check out all this and more down in the description. And until next time everyone, this has been Cape Jewel, and I'll see you all next time. Cheers.